Hi, this is Eyal from Redlex, and this is the second video in our series. And in this video, I'd like to go back to basics and explain how a MLL document is structured and how the style system relates to the structure of the document. And uh, before we begin, I'd like to mention that uh, you can download MLL from our site. It's www.mellel.com, M-E-L-L-E-L. And you download a full trial, full, uh, fully functional trial version, which you can try and see if it suits you. And if it does, you can purchase it by choosing Melel by Melel. And uh, so check it out if you're not familiar with it. Now, let's start. Let's launch Melel. I'll make the window bigger and choose fit width to show the text better. And uh, in this video, I'll start, I'll start from the bottom and then go up. The most basic element of a male document is, of course, the character. And a character is a letter or a digit or a punctuation symbol or any other symbol. And uh, there are two things we can say about characters. One is what they are. Is it the letter A or the digit 8 or colon and so on. The other thing is what are its attributes. For example, what font uh, is used and or what size, what color, so on. So if we want to make what change the attributes of a character we can select it we can select one or more characters and apply them by choosing something in the palette for example let's choose a different font and the character is changed i can choose a different size and so on so this is one way we can apply character attributes is by selecting and applying another way we can put the cursor somewhere and set the attributes. And as we do that, as we have a blinking insertion point and we set an attribute, once we did that, apparently nothing ha happened. But if we type now, the text we ty we're typing is using this attribute that we selected. So it's another way we can apply character attributes on the blinking insertion point and this will and these attributes will be used from now on so this is another way to apply character attributes okay let's undo that and delete the next element in a mellel document is a paragraph and a paragraph is a group of one or more characters that is terminated by a paragraph break so let's paste some text and now I will insert the paragraph break by uh, hitting the return return key now you can't see anything right now because a paragraph break is a invisible character but we can make invisible characters visible by choosing in the show on the toolbar show menu on the toolbar you can choose all invisible characters and now we can see spaces and paragraph breaks, tabs, and so on. So we have one paragraph. Let's add another paragraph so we can see how Mellel behaves with two paragraphs. I'll copy that and paste it. Now we have two paragraphs. Now, what kind of attributes do paragraphs have? First thing is alignment. We can align to the left or center or right. Or block another thing we can set is uh, indent we can indent the first line or we can set the margins make them narrower like that we can also set the line spacing in the alignment and spacing palette for example now we have a single line spacing we can make it one 1.5 lines or two lines and so on now, when we apply paragraph attributes and we have a blinking insertion point, the attributes apply to the paragraph 
the insertion point is in. So if we put the insertion point in the second paragraph and make a setting, it will apply to the second paragraph. Another way is to select one or more paragraphs and then apply the setting. Now the setting will apply to both paragraphs. Note, however, that you cannot apply attributes like that to less than one paragraph. So if I choose half a paragraph and apply something, the entire paragraph is set. The next element is sections. And the section is a series of paragraphs. And uh, it is terminated by a section break. So let's add a few paragraphs. Let's copy these two and put them here. Now we have four paragraphs. And let's put the cursor here at the end of the second paragraph. Choose insert, breaks, section break. And now we, we have added a section break. It looks slightly different than a paragraph break. And now we have two sections in this document. And what kind of attributes do they have? We can see that by opening the section palette. As we can see, the main thing the section palette deals with is columns. At the moment, we have a single column in this section. Let's choose two columns. And we have two columns. At another column, we have three columns, and so on. Another thing we can set is the gutter width, the, the distance between columns. I'll make it smaller. Or bigger. We can also add a line between columns and choose a different width for the line and so on. So sections are uh, basically deal, dealing with columns. Now, just like paragraphs, we uh, apply when we apply a section attributes on a blinking insertion point, it will apply to the section we're inside. We can choose more than one section and then apply on both sections some attributes, make them both two columns or three and so on. And also, we cannot apply these attributes on less than one section. So if I chose just the first paragraph of the first section, which ends here, choose two columns, still both paragraphs are, are laid out in two columns. So these are sections. Now the next element is a page range. And a page range is a series of one or more sections that are terminated with a page style break. So let's prepare a document with many pages so we can see what uh, what this is all about. Okay, so now we have a document with four pages. I'll use a different zoom setting so we can see easier the entire page. I'll choose fit page. Now I can see all pages and I can count them one, two, three, four. Now let's go to the second page and at the end I'll insert a page style break like this. So now we have this document is composed of two page ranges. So what does it mean? Let's go to the beginning of the document, place the cursor here in the beginning and open the page palette. Now in the page palette we can see that we have settings for things like header, footer, background color, image and so on. Let's click header. As you can see the document now has a header. Now let's scroll down and see what happens in the rest of the document. So first page has a header, second page also has a header, third page too. Okay, so we, we have a little spill here. And now the fourth page and the fifth page don't have headers. Why is that? 
Well, that's because we inserted here a page style break. And a page style break basically breaks the layout of pages and allows us to have different layouts for pages in different sections of the document. So any settings I make in the first page range will apply only to those pages, only basically only to the text in those pages and not apply here. And if I make any settings while the cursor is here, those settings will apply only here and not in this section. So let's see how it, how it goes. I'll put the cursor here in the second page range after the page style break. And instead of using a header or footer, let's change the orientation of the page. I'll click margin and orientation in the page palette and choose landscape orientation instead of, instead of portrait. And we have a document with, which starts in a portrait uh, orientation and has some headers and the rest of the document, the second page range is using landscape orientation and no header. So page ranges basically control the appearance of the page, the way the uh, pages, the way the text flows inside the pages.